Hey there and welcome back. So in the previous video we talked a bit about the different annotations we can use on a test method and right now we just have the display name here and the display name on the class and I just refactored a bit so we have the add method that's using the AAA pattern and also we got subtract that is using the subtract method and then we have also multiply. So if we run the, the test cases here, we can see that they should pass. Okay. And also if you want to solve them by duration or maybe by uh, solve them alphabetically, you can do this uh, using these buttons here. Okay. So let's talk briefly about uh, the divide because we don't have the divide test method here yet. And the reason is that divide could potentially go wrong we could have an exception because if we go to main and let's uh, comment out all the other methods except divide, let's uh, imagine that we do 10 divided by zero. And let's just run main instead. Let's see what happens here if we accidentally try to run the calculator with 10 and zero in the divide function, what will happen here? We will have arithmetic exception divide by zero. So that could be a problem there because uh, we don't know what the user will input if this is a front end or we have JavaFX or something, they might input zero. Of course, we could limit this in the front end so that we're not allowed to enter zero here, but we should uh, modify our calculator just a bit because this could, this operation here could potentially go wrong. So uh, first, we could do something like this, that if number two is zero, then we're gonna do something here. We could throw new illegal argument, oh, argument exception. Okay, so if we have zero in number two parameter, then we throw a new illegal argument exception. We can provide a method here saying that divide by zero. Otherwise, we will do the normal operation and uh, do the calculation. So if we go back to main here and we still do this, of course, we're going to get this illegal argument exception now. Yeah, so we can see here, a legal argument exception, divide by zero, and we don't have this arithmetic exception anymore. So, okay, so how can we test this in our unit test? So we have a method that will throw an exception if we have an invalid input, and let's just mark it with a legal argument exception here as well. Okay, so in our calculator test, it's important to test both the valid inputs and also invalid inputs because we don't know what the user will do with our program. So we have to test all the cases. And it is actually probably more important to do a test on the invalid input because the, in the invalid input might be the cases where the program will crash. As we can see here that if we divide by zero, we will have an exception and the program will, will crash. So we need to test how the program behaves if it has invalid input. So the first we can do is, of course, we can make a test for our uh, test valid divide. So that is the easy case here. Then we have divide, maybe we will do 20 and 10. That should be two here and then we can uh, do the assertion. So if we run calculator test here, we can see we have test valid divide, that goes well, so that is all good. And then we have tested the first part of the divide function here, and next up we need to test the invalid. So we can just write here, tests and then void test invalid. Let's just do this here and minimize the test panel here. Right, so let's see here, test invalid divide. And let's copy some of the setup here from, let's just take the arrange part. 
So we set up the calculator, then we can do the act here. So first off, we can do one thing here. We can do assertion, then we can do assert a throws, and then we can provide the illegal argument exception that we expect. And next up, we need to provide an executable, and we can do this using a lambda expression. And this is basically just a body that will provoke or throw the illegal argument exception. So we will use here the calculator and we will do divide 10 and zero, something that divides by zero. So that is one assert throw. So that will be an act and also assert. Okay. So if we run this, whoop, let me don't screw up the code here. Let's just run our calculator test. So we can see here that our test is passing invalid divide. So that's good. And we can see that we get this illegal argument exception. We can also try to prove that it's actually working. It is actually not throwing it when we make a legal divide. So let's run the invalid divide here when we have a legal, a valid divide operation that should have the indication that it should fail. So we can see that when we make a valid divide, the test will actually fail because it expects to get this illegal argument that our calculator will throw in this case. But it doesn't get it because it is a valid divide. So it is, a, it is actually getting this exception. So that is one way. If we want to have even more control of our test, if we want to make sure that we are getting the correct text here, for instance, divide by zero, we can see we get this message from our illegal argument exception. We also have an option of uh, looking at this message here from the exception. So if we want to do that, we can we can see if we hover over assert throws, it will, it is a public static, t extends throwable. And uh, it means that this method will uh, return a throwable. So basically we can use exception uh, exception and then we can get the ex the exception here that is being thrown uh, the reason why IntelliJ is uh, underlining red here is because we had this error just before so it is not really a, a syntax error right now but then we can make an extra assertion and we can write string expected message so we expect divide by zero this is what we expect from our uh, exception here our illegal argument exception and we can also do string actual message and then we can use our exception from our previous assert and we can do get message and then it's pretty easy just to do extra assert here, then we can do assertions, assert equals, and we can type in the expected first, expected message, and the actual message. Okay. Yes, we can see we are arranging our calculator, we are acting and also actually asserting in here because we assert that we get this exception thrown, we are making an invalid divide, then we make an extra check that we get this special message from the exception. This is what we expect. This is what we actually get. And then we assert what uh, if it is equal. Okay, so let's try to ru uh, run this uh, extended invalid divide test method. Okay, so we can see that test invalid divide will pass all of them will pass so that is good so if we modify for some reason if we let's say in our development work we agree that there should be a different error message here it should just be divide error something like that we can see that our unit test will reflect this immediately when we run this 
So we can see here, test invalid divide. It expected divide by zero. It got the divide error, and that is not uh, what the assertion should be. So it failed the assertion. So this is just an extra check that we have fine grain control of this part of our program. So this part, we, if we take a look at the if the yeah we can see the test valid divide the test valid divide will check this portion here and also this part of the of the method but the test valid divide will not check this actually that this is what this is why we have the test invalid divide because we will provoke our calculator to throw this exception and then we will check this check if it is actually able to handle uh, an invalid input Okay, so uh, that was an extension of uh, our unit test. So now we have a complete, more or less complete uh, unit test of uh, our calculator. And the good thing again here, we can rerun this test now. We can use this, we can modify it, adapt it to our needs, and then we can rerun it to get an indication of whether our program works. So that concludes what I wanted to demonstrate here in this video about unit testing. It is really important and it is important to test invalid and valid inputs. Okay, so hope you make this work and have fun with this. Bye-bye.